To yeah. me, he's about <clears throat> as like in, like I guess relevant to the LGBTQ community as Kamala probably is to the African American or Black community. Yeah, did you right? see his approval among queer people? Um, right. There was one LGBTQ plus poll, and I think he was like three or four with like Warren and Bernie at the tippy top, essentially. Right. Um, people and can look, see through him. People can see through him. And oh, he's yeah. Terrible. The fact that actually, and I've said it a bunch of times, the fact that he's gay is the only kind of thing I like about him. I hate to say it's it. It's only an like, endearing aspect. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's the only thing. But that's not sufficient for me to vote for you. Mm-hmm. No. It is for wealthy suburbanite liberals in place, places like Lake Oswego who do not have a care in the world. And the thing that matters to them is their feelings. And it's not about whether or not what they're voting on is going to help people, you know. Well, has he done anything to like advance LGBTQ causes? Like, I don't actually see him as doing any. Is he representative of that community in such a way? I don't think so. I mean, visibility is the only thing that you can credit him for. But I mean, like, look, the the whole what irritated me about um, some of the libs who support someone just based on their identity is that, like, that's the only way that they can see progress being made. It's like, you know, if you're if you're economically well off, then nothing that these, uh, you know, politicians do to advance worker rights is going to affect you personally. So you can feel like we're making progress if we check more boxes where it's like, okay, we have the first uh, black president, maybe we can get a first gay president when that's not like, there's a difference between descriptive representation and substantive representation. Descriptive representation means that you just get more people who look like you demographically. You have more people from uh, different communities. So if there's like say 5% gay people, uh, in, in society, there should be 5% gay people in Congress. But substantive representation means that you have people who are willing to advocate for that particular community, which can be accomplished even if you're not part of the community. So like when it comes to Pete Buttigieg, it's like, for me, true equality is not like these PC uh, PMC liberals not touching him because he's gay. Like true equality is you not even considering that he's gay. Right. Like that's true equality. That's when we've made it, in my opinion, because then it's like, Oh, you're not thinking about it. Like, I don't want you to think when I bring my husband with me, like, oh, there's your husband. He's gay. I want you to not even register. Like, I want it to be like, oh, there's your, you know what I mean? So that to me is like true equality. So, um, yeah, that's, that's why I, I'm not a fan of like anyone who tries to weaponize identity politics. Um, but identity politics matters, but like we see, like, at least for, from our perspective on the left, we're we're so much better, more more persuade. Uh, we could persuade more people than Democrats, so they don't have anything else. You know what I mean? The the only thing that they can do is try to shut us down by saying yeah. that we're like, uh, um, you know, we're homophobic or whatever. It, I don't know if you all remember. So like earlier this year, I got put on blast by J.K. Rowling, and um, I forgot what it was in particular, but there was a bunch of them who called me a homophobe, and I don't remember why. Um, I thought she's considered to be like turfy and 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 very like isn't she like one of those like very anti-trans isn't that she's thing very that very like deeply deeply transphobic so I did call her out for being transphobic trash but there uh, there I mean of course people are saying that I was sexist but um I don't remember what it was I wish I could remember like one of them I remember I spotlighted it because it was so hilarious they called me a homophobe and back in the Pete Buttigieg primary days they they said the same thing as well it's like oh I've got my Uno re- reverse card so don't make me pull that bitch out um but yeah I, I don't like the weaponization of identity politics because like I I'd rather talk about substance right I think it's it's right. cheap. unless you're actually discriminatory it doesn't matter like I, I, it'd be absurd to think that like if Jen, if you, for example, disagreed with me and you called me a dickhead, uh, <laughs> that I'd be like, oh, you would call a gay man a dickhead? Like, no, there's got to be a reason why you called me a dickhead. You know what I mean? Like, so that's, I'm all about trying to like elevate substance. Um, and, and you know what? You bring up a really excellent but point. I'm a self loathing Jew. If you're a homophobe, is that the same thing? Like, I dare to criticize Israel. So I'm a self loathing Jew. You get it. Bernie, too. Yeah, Mike's a lapsed Catholic, so there you go. You, got, you definitely break it. And, and the one thing that I do, there's two points I want to make before we close out is uh, 
the, the first one is, you know, everyone thinks that Trump is the biggest problem in the GOP. No, he's not. The biggest problem in the GOP is the evangelical right that has yeah. captured that party. Yeah. And that's why somebody like Mike Pence was within a COVID disaster of being the president of the United States. And I don't care mm -hmm. how long he would have been in that office. Not good. He would have had it for a while. And he is the type of person that Ted Cruz wishes he could be in terms of a theocratic <laughs> politician. Gross. Because that power <laughs> was right there for the taking. And that is why you hear the language that is used in so many of these places. That's why somebody like Marjorie Taylor Greene, as, as sick as it is to think about Pete Buttigieg running for president again, Marjorie Taylor Greene is going to run for president at some point. So I agree. you have to listen to the things that these individuals say. They're dog whistles that they're throwing at these particular individuals. Mm -hmm. And this is where I really try to court as many libertarians to what we're doing as possible. Yeah. Because libertarians, the true libertarians, believe in the Constitution. They believe in the separation of church and state. Whatever you believe is your business. Don't you even think about trying to push it on me. Mm -hmm. When George Bush was doing this, particularly in his second term, it was so disgusting. And the fact that not enough people were willing to say anything about it. And then you remember when the, the Democrats ran for president starting in 06, 07, and you have Hillary Clinton on Chris Hayes saying, no, I don't believe in gay marriage. It's like, yeah, this, this is the type of shit that we really have to be diligent about because the wedge. As in you don't believe it, it should be. You don't believe it should be like somehow they're the moral authority. I never understood any of that. To be I honest. held a grudge against her because of that, because uh, right before she I ran was when Chelsea got married. And it's just like this slap in the face, like, oh, I see you went to your daughter's wedding, but you're denying my wedding. Like I'm watching my nieces and nephews get married before I can get married. Like, fuck you. So I did. Hold, I did hold a grudge against that. Like that is actual discrimination. Yeah, no, I, I, as well, you should hold a grudge against mm -hmm. her. And there's, well, and we have a myriad of reasons why we could all hold a true, grudge against true. Clinton. It's, yeah. There's no shortage of things. But I remember when I was in law school, one of the things I wrote a, like a study semester on was civil, comparing civil unions and gay marriage. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it was only, you had civil unions in Vermont and Hawaii. And that this was like fairly new because this was like, Okay, I'm a little old. This was like in 98. Um, and so I remember writing it then. And at the time, it spoke to me that, well, if, if, if you're okay with gay people having a civil union, then what difference does it make to you if they're married? Like, I didn't understand why were you making these distinguishing things? Like, does that make you sleep better at night? Like you think, mm -hmm. therefore, it's not tainting the sanctimony because of your make-believe it's, it's mythical sky it's being the religion? Mental religion? I don't know. That is religion. Well, that's, that's, really, that's what it comes down to. That's yeah. really what it comes down to because otherwise, because it isn't the, the, the rights of it. Most people seemed okay with that, right? Like this was what I was mm -hmm. studying. Like I just found it so interesting, but yet once you say marriage, well, that just can't be. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking because the mythical sky being said, so to you, mm -hmm. like, is there some sort of like, this is why reason? I to, like, I don't understand why that is, but it's also why I tend to have more sympathy for conservatives and liberals because a lot of these people grow up in communities where the church is the center of the world that they live in. The yeah. people are taught to believe that yeah. what the Bible says is more important than what the Constitution and your education say. Mm -hmm. And that has reached somewhat of a, of, a, of a breaking point in many ways because a lot of people realize that religion is losing its hold on this country. It's had it for a yeah. very long time. But – it's start, the cracks are there. People are especially, you know, millennials and especially Gen Z. Like they really have no patience for this whatsoever. You can be whatever you want to be. You can live whatever life you want to live. But this idea, you saw what just happened with Ted Cruz's daughter. Ted Cruz's yeah. daughter is now is bisexual. Good and she her. apparently tried to commit suicide. Because okay, but in, in all fairness, I, anybody of any sexual orientation that would be Ted Cruz's child might end up in that way i'm just yeah saying. it's not it's not easy right that life is not hard i'm just and and not that not to discount whatever she went through but i'm just saying that's not exactly a good like that's not a control group no but the worst part about ted cruz the worst part about him is i don't think he believes any of it i think he's probably an extremely normal rational person who is playing a role and he's playing it well and it served him well and he's mm -hmm. got a re-election coming up in two years and lord knows how the hell he's going to play that shit 
Because it's going to, I mean, now it's, you, you don't know how he's going to use his daughter for political cannon fodder. And you better believe he'll, he will do it. That yeah. Of all the people that will, you know, it, that's, that to me is, that, that I just is don't understand why that's even news. Like, why do I, why do I care about what Ted Cruz's daughter She is? tried to kill herself is what I'm saying. Right. No, no, no. But like, whether or not she's bisexual. Like, oh. why is that? Okay, I understand she tried to kill herself. That I understand is newsworthy. Well, apparently she but, did like a TikTok video or something like that that mm-hmm. relates to the fact that, she, you know, her father um, says these terrible things oh, okay. about- So you know, she made you know, the you know, link get, between those correct. two things. Okay, correct. that's what yeah. I wasn't yeah. understanding. Was like, saying, why like, are we talking about- You know, it's all, it, I, would have, I would have admired her even more if she came out and said, I just want you all to know that my father doesn't believe any of this shit. He just says it to basically throw meat to his- Well, you don't know that's his, the case. That's your theory. It is my theory. I could be wrong. She might know but, better than you. She might have a better inkling as to what kind of real, if he's a true douche or does he just play one on TV? Just keep your religion the hell out of my business. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.